Hello again and welcome back to this Let's Play Imperator Rome as Magna Grecia. I hope you all enjoyed the slightly extended last episode despite or even perhaps because of my tactical error there towards the end. I was amused myself when I went back to review the video and saw that I I quite accurately stated that I probably shouldn't do this. The entire Roman army is probably there, and sure enough, I did it anyhow and turned out to be right. So, lesson one there, trust your instincts. Lesson two, a naval forces alone are not sufficient for reconnaissance. Send in a small recon force before sending in your whole army. That should be less of a problem in the future though, because hopefully we'll have an even stronger army. Let's get that fleet down, as long as I've clicked on it anyhow, move them down to our main port there in the capital, and talk about today's goals. Now I want to try to not spend too much time on administrative matters, even though there is a fair amount to do, primarily because I want to move the episodes forward as well, uh, and forward in a new direction now. That direction will be a little bit more inward looking, and when it comes to the outward 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 world that definitely is a tongue twister that we want to be perhaps a tiny bit more diplomatic and if not always diplomatic not straight out annexing everything we get our hands on we are going to start building up some tributaries some client states and some feudatories and so on that said let's start right away by appreciating you know this uh new territory that we've recently acquired uh, this will represent, for now, more or less the line we draw in the Italian peninsula, beyond which we will not do any major expansion. Perhaps. I say that qualifying the, it with the fact that Rome will continue to be a thorn in our side as long as it exists. A thorn in your side close to your borders can keep you sharp, though, keep you on your toes. It can be beneficial. Uh, so maybe every now and then we go and uh, sharpen our swords on a Roman soldiers uh, and, and then we'll just see how it evolves. But since this is relatively the line that we will draw at, for now at least, barring your own advice that says, you know, no, cut them off maybe here instead, that would be a little bit more straight with the, uh, with the latitude, longitude, latitude there, I guess. Um, you can remember because it's ladder. That's how I was taught, at least when I was a child. So we could uh, could go up to there. Uh, we could even, in principle, draw the line at the river. Well, we can't because we would need something from Arturia. And they're our friends. And we'll see if they stay that way. We do like this Corsican land, but it's not essential. All right. No uh, unnecessary chatter now. We have some tasks to do. The first task is to marvel at our new territory and go, oh, we need some forts. Uh, I would like a fort there and there, but I'm going to wait just a little bit for this one because I have to think some things over. The capital of the region has not moved there, so it's not absolutely critically essential, and it might be better to have the fort there instead. This place, though, I definitely want a fort, even though the capital has not moved to that province either which is a bit unusual in this case. Uh, the capitals of provinces have tended to move to the most uh, populous province or territory in the province. Here you see we have 12, there we have 22. It's, it's unclear exactly why in this case it did not do that. I'll see if it does it later. If it does not, we just will have to move it manually. Though a port is coming up there, this city on the other hand is part particularly Roman in its makeup. I'll show you, even though I reviewed some of this stuff in advance. See, quite Roman. So let's get a marketplace up there to start encouraging those Romans to adopt our way of life. All right, marketplace is up there. We can also now look at our old fort line here and think about getting rid of it, at least this one here. It served us well, but we shouldn't hang on to things we don't need. So that has gone. This province is now almost fortless. I'm going to take a quick look there. 33, 22, and 26. All right, this will still be the biggest city even after we integrate these fellas. But we're not going to integrate them quite yet anyhow. We've just got too many things to do. That is taken care of. Now let's go take a quick look at our capital. 
as you see the city of Syracuse is uh, overpopulated at the moment, I am going to give them one more aqueduct. The reason being that this will allow the city to attain metropolis status eventually. Uh, and we will be happy with that. We won't push much more here though. We're going to start thinking about moving our capital to Exagas. I want this to get metropolis status, though we are a long way off. Primarily because I want the temple to be able to take another uh, artifact from the reliqui relic uh, reliquary. Yes, I think that's more or less right. Into its altar. Particularly, oh, we've got some other things sitting around there now. Uh, no, not all of them can be actually put in something. Maybe we'll review those in another episode. So, um, yes, I want to be able to put another thing in there. Particularly this ancient fertility figurine that we acquired. Get that population going up. Might even be worth it to do it now to uh, encourage the city to grow faster. Freeman happiness, citizen happiness. Who do we want to be more happy? Our freemen are already quite happy in general. And they're gonna be even happier because we are going to call down the deity of fertility here, global monthly food and national freeman happiness. I know we still want to swap out our deity of economy here and we will, uh, but I have the feeling that legions are a bit more important. I'd like to start getting them trained up. I start getting them battlefield experience. Sorry, I said that a bit loudly. Uh, so we call we will switch that out uh, after the legion law has been passed. I'm also going to perform the divine sacrifice here, King Pope Pig, and uh, that will allow us to kind of stabilize around 55 stability for now. All right. So since we made the Freeman happier there, I am going to swap out the Freeman happiness thing for the fertility figurine. Did it work? Yes, it did. All right, let's get that city growing a little bit quicker. Anything else we want to build in this city? I would say that it is about time that we get another library up. There are quite a few citizens and nobles in that city. And there will be more in the future. And I noticed while we, I was on the research screen, we are getting a little bit better at our efficiency ratio. But one or two more bumps should get us up to where I want to be. That is having it maxed out at 125%. All right, that being sorted, we have to get a new governor in this province. If you recall, uh, the gentleman here, what is his name? He just says he is the governor of, interesting that you don't immediately have his name on the top. Do you see it anywhere? No. Hmm, interesting. Nabus Pantushid, he was only hired due to his military acumen. We want to replace him with somebody who is loyal and has no corruption. And I have reviewed this in advance as well so that I could hopefully select things more carefully and have selected Mr. Agathos Agathoclid. You'd think I would have pronounced that word by now. Uh, I've said it so often. Um, we're going to select him because he has incredibly high loyalty and no corruption. He is ambitious, which is a slight drawback that can lead to undesirable events. We'll hope that he just stays in line, though. He does have very little martial abilities, which will mean he will probably have to go when there is a war. On the other hand, by then we'll have a legion, and they can take care of the leading role in battles in most cases. All right, let's get him in there. He is keeping it with uh, the infantile policy. I'm going to keep it like that, and I'm going to review the numbers in between episodes to see if we can get this even a little bit better. Because I'm I'm done building buildings here for happiness and such. We've got other things to do with our money that I'll cover in a minute. So I want this to be controlled, the province of loyalty to be controlled by passive means, which means either his policies, the governor, as you can see, is doing quite a good job because of his high loyalty a 0.11 extra boost every month to provincial loyalty. And um, we will look at whether changing the policy to either harsh treatment is, is more effective or whether we should focus just going religious conversion. Regarding other policies, and maybe I'm going to even start kind of just, you know, slow that down, but keep the thing clicking forward so that we move forward on time here. Uh, though it always means that you get distractions. 
I want to change this province's policy to religious conversion because there are some wrong religion people there, but the province is overall loyal. And this one as well can go to cultural assimilation as well as mm, it's more difficult for the other two provinces. I'll, um, I'll leave them as they are for now. But I don't think about it too much. All right, so clock is ticking forward. We also have a new military tradition. Hey, that's what I was waiting for. Some tech advances, civic advances, population capacity, and monthly food modifiers. Excellent. More trades to accept. Tons of trades. <laughs> Maybe I will have to pause it. So, military traditions. As you can see, I will pause it here then because I, I don't want to go over it so quick that you guys don't have a chance to look at what our options are. We do have the options here of getting some more experience for our starting cohorts and such. Useful, definitely. And I do love this tree. Siege, infantry, infantry, heavy infantry, that is. Uh, very nice. This is more mixed. A lot of light cav and such. However, this tree I want to focus on primarily because of the center route. Uh, we had talked about becoming more of a naval power, and this ability right here will not only give us a small navy in Masana, it will give us open sea combat bonuses and coastal sea combat bonuses. Uh, the other trees here, archers and light infantry morale, heavy infantry maintenance, and some land combat bonuses, which would be nice as well. Uh, this side a bit more mixed again, but eventually we get some light and heavy cavalry bonuses down at the bottom here. However, for now, per our promise for a uh, direction oriented at a taller maritime empire, let's go naval. And here's our little new navy. A little one here. Nothing special, but it will help. I will also do something here while I am on it that I probably should have done in episode one. I'm going to disband these heavies. We just uh, have been paying quite a bit of maintenance on them, a month, uh, a little bit less when we haven't got an admiral with them, of course, about uh, 90 cents. But it's just going to be a while till we can deploy them in any useful fashion. We haven't even got a large medium fleet yet, so bye-bye. Um, I know the controversial decision, but let's, uh, let's save that money because we're going to have some things to spend money on. So moving the clock forward, what are those things we will be spending money on? Well, first, stopping the clock again, we do have to perhaps bribe Macedon to improve our relations with them because we still want to get a female to marry our heir. That female was this 14-year-old here. And in order to do that, we need relations of 31 at present, but that will adjust as our aggressive expansion adjusts as well. So, we're not there yet. I'd say once we get up to zero or so, we need to send them a gift. We also do need to eventually not forget our friend over here in Egypt who needs to be brought to our country. Bringing him over, however, will give aggressive expansion though. So I want to wait until after we have attracted a Macedonian princess to come to our lands. The other thing to do with our money is complete a mission. That mission will be then the Pearl of Magna Grecia, which as you can see, now can be activated. Uh, whether it was the war preventing that or not, I'm not sure. I did not find any uh, thing on the wiki that said that that was a condition, that being at peace was a condition, but the wiki is not exactly up to date. So we can now activate it. The matter of Italia would give us claims for conquering, which is not our present goal. This will give us missions to build a little bit taller. I will qualify in advance, though I start the mission, that some of the missions can be a bit convoluted here and a bit wasteful, such as uh, the trade mission, for instance, which is going to require that we build forts down in this province, which isn't exactly a province that needs defending. Uh, and. In this province, we will be required, if I can verify, yes, in this province, we will be required to build farming settlements. And this is a bugged mission in that sense, uh, at least people have reported as bugged in the forums, in that even if you have a city, there, and we can see in this province, we have 
three of them. If that city is on a trade good that is a food, uh, and this one is, then you have to rip the city down to finish that mission. Um, that's just the price you pay, I guess. This city in particular, if this is the only case of that having to happen, isn't too big or valuable. It's got no buildings in it. It's only got 14 people. We'll be fine if we have to rip it down. Nonetheless, these are things that Paradox will undoubtedly tweak in time, and we may end up paying for things that we'd rather not pay for. Thus why I've got that money sitting right there. I will only look at like starting those missions maybe as the clock moves slow again, so that we don't get caught up in doing things. Speaking of cities, uh, Silbion prospers. That is the city that we were just looking at. I think that's the second time something like that's happened in this game. Uh, so, maybe it's because we uh, opened the mission. Could be. Um, all right. You never know what the modifiers are that trigger events. The Council of Sylveon have sent an envoy proclaiming that harvests, trade, and taxation have all produced a huge surplus this year. In a splendid show of national spirit, they have decided to offer the additional income to the state. But perhaps we could let them spend the money for their own uses. Hmm. We could take the money, which uh, is not significant compared to our treasury. We could get a marketplace in the city. We could get some popularity, which we do have uh, some room to improve, as well as provisional happiness and loyalty. And we can take this, which is kind of a roll of the dice. We'll get something. Right, I guess we do have to look at this really quickly then. The so fruits of Apulia requires farming settlements in all settlements producing food. Food producing provinces are highlighted except for the city. Currently have farming settlement in that one. That is our one of five. And this is two, three, four, and that is five. So given that, I'm gonna actually build the farming settlement there last, just to see if the mission completes. But that is five, and if it lists one of five and the one farming settlement is there, the math says that we will need a farming settlement there. So, but we'll build it last. Uh, so given that, that means this is the only rational decision because, or the money, but that's such, such a little bit amount of money. Let's, uh, let's get some happiness. All right, let us progress a little bit here then with the clock and talk a little bit about how we are going to approach the new diplomatic game. Now, there are several ways to do this, of course purely diplomatically, which we haven't been planning for appropriately, honestly. We've got aggressive expansion and all of that. Uh, nonetheless, we're not doing terrible. So we could recover in 10 years or so. We'll be in a good position to diplomatically sway people to voluntarily becoming tributaries after greasing the wheels of diplomacy again, of course, through these standard means. We could also do it militarily, of course, and conquer them and then say, now you're a vassal. Uh, let's try the diplomatic route just a little bit, though. Let's pick some people up here. And I say up here because what's one of our goals? We don't want Rome expanding any more than necessary. So we should try to prevent them from taking some of these lands. And then down into uh, Istria as well. And then even over here also. In fact, I'm quite keen to get some vassals over here. And hopefully people ignore me because I want to fight some Gauls. Um, I don't know why. I just want to test my forces against them. All right. So where are we building that fortress? All right. Right up there. We should probably get some of these other missions done. So maybe I should pause for just a moment. Get some of these buildings being built. Um, it's the most efficient way of doing it. It's just not always engaging for gameplay. So when I was checking out the ability... To, oh, we have military access with them. I have to remember to cancel that, maybe. Uh, to diplomatically make a tribal vassal or to demand tribute. You can see uh, we've currently got this potential strength modifier, which is a bit weird. Uh, rank modifier 2. That's very odd. Potential strength, yeah, that and rank. That is um, it's a rank thing I don't quite get. We should be higher rank, not them. Hmm. Well, we'll find out. But what I noticed earlier when I was looking, for, uh, when in the numbers were different than they are now, is it doesn't seem to so much matter the size of the country 
at least when you're talking about these. Maybe if you're talking about a country that's getting this large, or certainly this large, it takes more uh, ability, it takes more opinion to get them to accept tribal vassal status, but it doesn't seem to in the tool tips that they have here. I used to make a lot of tribal vassals when I was playing out here long ago. Uh, they can be useful when you've got some tribesmen because they impre increase your tribesmen's happiness. Um, and we do have some tribesmen, especially over in this region. So let's look then at trying to improve relations with the larger one for now. It may be that our vassal, our vassal, <laughs> you could show the opinion that I see the opinion I have of Etruria based on how I refer to them. <laughs> Our vassal. No, they're not our vassal. Do they have claims anywhere? All right. I thought they might get some claims up in here. It would make sense for them to do that. Uh, I was thinking about allowing them to expand up to the Po River and then then ceasing to support them in too many aggressive endeavors after that. Uh, but if they don't uh, want to do that, then, then it's up to them. So let's see if we can somehow sway Veneto. I think they seem a bit large, so I'm a bit concerned about that that in the end, like other things, there will be a spontaneous pop-up that says, oh no, they're far too large for them to become a, a vassal of you. So we could actually also try to pick somebody else. In fact, one thing I would like to do is, is look at the trade goods that are available here to see if there's any reason we would want to pick somebody else. But this is pretty standard stuff up here. No, no. All right, let's not mull it over too much though, but I will say, let's start with somebody a bit smaller. Let's go with these guys right here. Why not? They're right on our border. Um, uh, what's your opinion? Waiting for answers? Nope. Yeah. My opinion exactly. Yeah, let's uh, actually do it for somebody a little bit further away. This could put us in an uncomfortable position if our uh, friends all of a sudden decide that they want that turf. Just looking at the trade goods very quickly. Wine, wine, wine. Nothing special at all. This place at least has fish, wine, olives. Also, nothing. They have salt, a lot of salt. That's good. Um, all right, we're going to go with them. We'll just find out. If not, we then we have a big vassal. That's fine. Let's improve relations with them. That'll get it started. Then we'll guarantee them at some point when we feel that that is necessary. And then we'll slowly uh, work on what comes next. All right. Apologies that took a little bit longer. I thought I had it selected who I was going to do up here, but then I went back and forth at the last minute. Oh, no, these people, these people. Maybe we should just uh, like try to vassalize every purple country. All right. The Parthian Hordes. Sensing a moment of weakness, the hordes of the Parnia Wastes have descended upon the Seleucid lands as a pack of wolves would savage a lamb. The attack came without warning, with Basilius Antiochus being amongst the first casualties having been touring the boarding region when the attack came. Seemingly not content with this apocalyptic turn of events, the nobles of the Seleucid realm have turned on one another, squabbling to determine a legitimate successor. Will the Titan of the East fall to ruin? All right. So uh, events in the East are uh, taking a new turn. Oh, woe. Woe is us. We'll see how things develop there but a long way from where we need to be concerning ourselves with. Getting up to four there, almost where we want to be. So, we are improving relations up there. I am paused again though, I do apologize for that. Should not be paused. We've taken care of the relations up there, but yes, we did want to sort of pause as well, though I, if I leave it running slow enough, just to keep the clock moving forward, we can do this. So, to complete this mission, it is a little bit convoluted. First. You see we have three of five um, city status ports, or one of five that are fortified. I've done this mission before as Rome and uh, maybe even as in my, in my testing Syracuse game. And you don't need five, you need three. So we can get rid of the ports that are not in cities. Here and here. And then that leaves three here, all cities, all ports. So let's get rid of you and you. Now, we go back, that does do one thing, lowers the amount of citizens that we'll, we will receive as a reward, but we would have had to have made all of these cities, and there's already too many cities in this province. All right, so apparently it thinks that is enough. We have all ports in the territory that have city status, and now we need to fortify them all. This other X you see, with the, also with the X 0.0 is, 
won't matter. I actually had to go back in my game files and, and kind of check these kind of things uh, in previous games and because I couldn't remember how I finished it. This does not need to be finished because only one of the following must be true. Uh, I still would like them to fix the tooltip though because I really wonder what 0, 0.0 is da -da 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 means. Religious advances, yay! So we need forts in both of these provinces. Really, really not the most efficient use of our money, but it is a six citizen, so hey, it adds up. We may as well then, uh, though quickly check our tech. All right, almost to oratory. Then we'll start thinking about what to do with those inventions. But we do need to move on also then maybe to the fruits of Apulia, and we can start building farming settlements in all food producing regions of this province. So this is this province, and the food is here, 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 and lastly there. So we've got a farming settlement there. Let's get one up. Well, let's check who has the most slaves at, mo at the moment. This one. So we're going to get the farming settlement up there first, and then we'll get the next one up here. Still plenty of money. We're not going to want to spend a lot more at the moment because plus money to make a legion. All right, we are at plus seven for Mastodon. Let's go over here then and talk to them. Send them a little gift. More money away. And now let's take a look at how Thessalonica is feeling about our kingdom. So we can arrange a royal marriage with her. With our primary heir, Isagonus Agosaklid. Good. We can also arrange perhaps a marriage between the other... Oh, I should pause this before something happens. <laughs> Alright, Turbulent Priests. High Priest Audulion Nikid has made it clear to the priesthood that he can no longer tolerate Agathocles II Agathocles' godless impiety. Without the support of the priesthood, the people will start to believe that Agathocles II does not have the support of the gods, which would harm our legitimacy. What's wrong with this guy? Does he not like us? Hmm. He's not our rival or anything. Guess he must be truly devout. Uh, let him complain. I would lose a bit of legitimacy and he would lose loyalty. Or we make a large donation to the priesthood and he will gain some loyalty. Legitimacy is quite high. I don't look quite on death's door yet. Uh, you want high legitimacy when you pass away. So I don't think it's very serious to just take a five hit, um, especially when it goes up by two something per year. Feather floating outside the window. It was very, um, oh, what's it called? American Beauty or something? Uh, old film. All right. So yeah, uh, and he's very loyal. So let him complain. We've got better uses for our money. Now, where was I? I was trying to look at something while that was happening. And now I can't recall what it was. Distracting. Ah, yes, the marriage. Ah, yes. Prenuptial agreement. And she is still a little bit young. Um, let, wait, let's uh, take a quick look at her sister, though. I'm, I'm just saying sister. I don't know if they're actually sisters. 7123... Hmm, no, and we'd have to wait a few more years before she could come around and would be producing heirs, so... Oh, and her infection cleared up. Yes, yes. Yay, okay. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Uh, she will make an excellent spouse. I do hope then, you know, that he actually takes the throne successfully. Uh, <laughs> he's got good, relatively decent mill, so she can help offset his uh, inferior military capabilities. Arranged a royal marriage between Isagonus, Agathoclid, and Thessalonica and Trepatrid. Yay! There we go. Um, maybe, though, while we're at it, we're going to organize one also for this other girl. Little backup plan. Ah, she's not. She has to be 12, so we have to wait a year. Alright, that's fine. Because then I want to start doing some things that might upset Mastodon. So I, I'm. I'm keen to get these uh, royal marriages started. Let's get our clock rolling. We can even pick it up just a tiny bit here now that the royal marriage is sorted. 
Anybody promised? It doesn't list promised, but uh, hopefully that keeps everything in hand. Uh, da -da -da -da, nothing else I want to do there. I'm very much worried that somehow that just doesn't come to be. It'd be so sad. En envy of Rome? You gotta be kidding. You mean the city that we sacked? Uh, right. Standard event. These things happen. Our neighbors wonder is the object of envy and awe of our populace. The people speak of of the superiority of Rome. Dangerous talk. So basically, no re reason to read this event again and twist the knife. Um, we have other priorities. So we'll gain tyranny and lose popularity. Oof. Um, we will gain some prominence, but we already have great prominence. Or we are going to get a claim on Rome and get some tyranny. We'll take that claim on Rome, even though I really don't care about getting that city a pile of rubble. As long as we're talking about tyranny, though, it's been a long time since I looked in my jail cell. Let's um, do the characters. Let's go to our country, of course, now. And imprisoned. No, nobody. Oh, that's right. I've got some things clicked there that would have to go. So we do have some people in prison. All right. Any of these people in our country? Yeah, these people. And they're, they're of no good to us. So let's just sell them into slavery. It's um, not money we need now, but I wonder why she's in jail. But she's blunt and foolish. Probably. All right. Probably a country we conquered, of course. Uh, let's sell her into slavery, too. Eventually, maybe we'll do a gladiatorial debut. Um, but we'd have to have a pretty unpopular leader to, to justify that. All right. These people, on the other hand, are foreign nationals. So I wonder, couldn't, uh, shouldn't you usually be able to say, hey, Carthage, don't you want your prisoner back? I know I've seen it before, but I don't see it right now, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for it. All right. Let the Carthaginians rot in the cell. We can get the time rolling then again here. Our diplomatic overture is going okay here in... Uh, Venito, demand tribute, yes, rank, current strength, current strength. That rank thing is really weird. Or we're like a major power, you're a nobody. Hmm, man, yeah, tribal vassal status is better anyways. They don't join our wars as a tribal vassal, but that's all right. We're just looking to get any sort of subjects right now. And at 99, I think we can get there eventually. There we go, oratory advances at... 35 minutes in, well, probably a little bit less because I always talk for a couple, or sit for a couple minutes at the beginning and sip water and maybe check sound or something. So that is excellent. Uh, we have then three inventions, but I will wait till the beginning of next episode to review what those should be because I will maybe ask you your opinion on it. Uh, but we'll close out with that at the very end. We do have a little bit more money then, so we can get maybe the last farming settlement up and going here. I don't see us uh, getting any sort of extra uh, um, finesse or anything anytime soon. His finesse is mm, pretty bad. Uh, so, and we might be switching out that uh, deity anytime. So best to build it now. Let's get that last farming settlement up. So a little bit shy there on how much we'll need to build our legions, but it's close enough. The provincial loyalty here then. Okay, 0 0.09. That's looking better. 0 0.16. I'm still surprised that this province's provincial loyalty is worse. It's um just uh, just because it seems smaller. I guess, you know, size doesn't really matter in this regard. Um, all right. Maybe I should figure out something to build in this city too then to just make people a bit happier. Yeah, those nobles are really unhappy. <laughs> um, I'll I'll think about it, but we're gonna still have more mission stuff to build. So yeah, we need that money for other things. Tell me what we will do though to close out. Then we will first talk about inventions. Then I'll do the next thing that I'm looking forward to. So, Marshall advances. Since we're currently switching slightly more diplomatic, we're gonna still need a military because that is the uh, sharp edge of diplomacy. Uh, however, I think we pass on that for now. Uh, let me know if you disagree. We do have a lot of naval things that could help out here a little bit. Particularly, I would say, running down this route, since those are all of our ships there. 
and getting a little bit more uh, ship damage taken and and received helps because we have a uh, national, national idea, I guess I will call it uh, heritage, that uh, gives us advantages in that regard as well. All right, that being said, you know, we definitely want to run down these lines, uh, but not now. What makes sense here is to work more down this direction. Free provincial investment, we, we do have more of them. And in fact, that reminds me, I have to use some of them. Uh, I had meant to do that at the opening. So uh, this is something I would really like, naval movement speed. So I'm quite keen to get down this route as well. Local building slots, ooh, plus four. I mean, that will be in our capital, I assume. Currently Syracuse, but perhaps not forever. This as well gives just lots of nice little general bonuses. Lovely if you can get down uh, to where? Um, here? No. Yeah, I can't see it right now, but also nice little bonuses. But if we're going diplomatic, we're going to have to go down this tree a little bit. Because this is where you get a lot of aggressive expansions, subject opinions, and aggressive, aggressive expansion decline, more diplomatic relations, as well as something that we should be targeting this here. Aggressive expansion change, okay, unlocks grand theater building. So that would allow us then to build theaters, to start integrating cultures that are not of our own right there. They are expensive. Ooh, I must say they really learned about the value of those and I think Paradox increased the price slightly. So my idea for these three innovations and maybe the fourth one when it comes online eventually from the next military advance is to maybe just race down this line to try we'll get through three of them uh, i i really do like mixing and matching and taking some other stuff but this would give us then either help us burn off ae or we could get the whole triumph costs decreased and, and some extra manpower which we could use um then we could go to war again and tell me where, which war though if you tell me which war you want to do i can take that one i hold triumph so rarely partially because of the cost that that it would be nice to have it cheaper so that we can justify holding more of them just because it's you know a little role playing and then that would go down to an extra diplomatic relation slot useful for client states uh more aggressive expansion impact also would immediately burn off 10 ae so taking it now would be beneficial while we actually have ae to burn off and diplomatic relations another one plus one unless we want to go the with the improve opinion maximum which probably almost makes more sense. Yeah, I think so. That's a uh, improved opinion maximum is great. Um, and then working down to this. So that is kind of my proposal. Let me know what you think. Maybe pop up on your version of the game. Let me know if you think that seems rational if we're going the diplomatic route. Um, I do like this, this side of the tree as well. But since we kind of need to target that theater anyways, we can get kind of two birds, one stone there. Um, if not, this is the dip rep route as well and the control distance, which we will uh, hopefully be discovering more about as we expand our tentacles much further abroad. Religious advances, yeah, I'd love to get theological colleges. That is uh, on our list for once we come back to this area and anything to make our religious people happier. All right, so sort of that, uh, again, going over time a little bit. So I will wrap up with that instead of the last thing that I was going to do, which was uh, to bite the bullet and pass the law to implement the Royal Guard. Uh, I will, however, start the next episode, unless I have a panic attack and give up on that, with doing that. So in addition to telling me if you uh, like the tech path choice, uh, tell me also what you would like maybe the legion composition to look like any preferences in your regard to that we probably won't be able to make the biggest legion in the world the first time around uh but you know 12 or so units seems to be a, a standard starting legion size 12 cohorts uh get them going get them trained up and use them as our shock troops uh so those are the kind of things that tech tree legion composition and if you think this uh, strategy of starting up here and trying to get some little uh, little buddies up here to block Roman expansion is the uh, wisest idea. And we'll uh, try to accelerate that a little bit more, not just with Benito, but start uh, start finding some other people that we can, so we can start grabbing them left and right and maybe get up one or two claims where we can do that the uh, military route as well. Thank you for joining me for this uh, latest episode of Let's Play Imperator Rome as Magda uh, Kalekia. Feel free to like, 
feel free to subscribe. And regardless, definitely feel free to comment. Would love your input on those uh, options that I laid out there. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you again soon. Ciao.